Those of you who uh, live on the north side of Springfield, you have uh, seen the landscape of the Pillsbury Mills location for decades, not doing anything. Well, there's a lot happening now over there, including federal and city funds. We'll see if some state funds can go out there to help clean up that site. But uh, as they put all the uh, efforts behind this with the nonprofit Moving Pillsbury Forward, uh, Chris Richmond with us to talk about a discovery they made recently. Chris, this is pretty incredible, and thanks for taking time with us here on WMAY with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop. Uh, so tell us about uh, the, the the Doughboy and uh, what you guys have. Uh, have discovered here absolutely yeah you know in early december uh we found a control panel electrical control panel had all sorts of lights and gizmos on it um actually had a little doughboy figure on it so our our little guy's uh four almost five inches tall and uh clearly looks like uh, an early image of the doughboy so we uh set about doing some research uh, early on to to see what we could find about the origins of the doughboy and of course there's the pillsbury company story uh that it uh, that the doughboy uh came into existence through an ad agency leo burnett ad agency in 1965 when they pillsbury contracted them um but what i'm hearing here locally uh, from in former employees at the Pillsbury plant is that the Doughboy origin may have actually come from a worker at the plant wow. who was a sketch artist and uh, that put a sketch in a suggestion box and was paid a little bit of money for that. And, and then, you know, the Doughboy came out a few years later. So that's what we're hearing locally. We're trying to verify that. We're trying to get the historic record accurate. So this uh, control panel uh, where this little uh, doughboy image is is put on there, what was this control panel for? Where in the factory was this? And when do you think, and I don't know how you go about verifying something like this, but when do you think that doughboy was actually placed on that control panel? Right. We we think it, it was likely placed on the control panel in the late 50s or, or, or early to mid 60s. Um, it's hard to verify, but what we know is that control panel is in a portion of the plant, the bakery mix portion of the plant that was built in 1949 and came into service just after World War II. Uh, it's in the, the pre-mix area, and of course it's on a panel that says compounding system, and it, it shows a whole diagram of, of what would happen to put together some of these bakery mixes at the plant. This is on the first floor level. Uh, I've had some social media interaction this uh, past several days that uh, leads me to a number of folks that worked in that area of the plant, and we're still trying to get in contact with them and, and verify some of some of their information about their memories of that particular control panel. We're also looking around the plant for other potential uh, doughboy images to show up. You know, it's pretty incredible what you guys have been able to do there at uh, the Pillsbury site and people watching along online uh, will be able to see just some of the uh, wonderful uh, images of people from the from the past working on this uh, on this site, uh, all of the, the, the jobs that were created, uh, but where it's at right now with uh, the, the, the status of this location, uh, you've got a lot of moving pieces here, uh, Chris, with the uh, with the moving plant, Pillsbury for forward, uh, tell us about all the things you guys have done, um, even just in the past few years, the and the financing you've secured uh, to be able to uh, really take care of the, the problem property the out there. From the site, right. Cer the certainly a lot of moving pieces uh, uh, last six months in particular. And you know, we took possession of the site fashion, in March of last year, so nearly mess, 12 months ago. Legal mess uh, for them, cleaned up a lot of the, the, the debris that was scattered about settled, the site, prepared the buildings forward, for demolition. For and just uh, in, in January, we took down our first 50,000 square foot warehouse, a building that was collapsing already. It was sort of deemed our number one public safety hazard. Uh, so we took care of that. We've raised, um, we, we've gone out and raised funds uh, privately and locally to help us offset administrative costs. But we've also gone to our uh, local, state, and, and federal leaders 
Uh, they've come through with uh, $2 million now at the federal level and $2 million at the, at the local level with the city of Springfield. And we're working up at the state house to, to garner more funds such that the facility can be uh, torn down appropriately, uh, remediated all, all of the asbestos and everything dealt with appropriately and such that we can get the site redeveloped. Uh, so we know we've got a nine to ten million dollar project. We're, we've got four million dollars to work with at this point, and we're we're making some decisions on where the first uh, large scale demolition is going to take place. And uh, still, several buildings remain uh, as you guys uh, continue to work uh, together to get those funds to help tear this site down. Uh, what do you hope ultimately uh, can go there? What what could possibly go there? Uh, looking at just an overview, uh, there's a, a as you said a pretty active rail yard there that just got some upgrades there as well. Uh, what do you foresee possibly uh, being a, a good fit for that location? Yeah, you know, it looks like the highest and best use for the property. It's an 18 acres of, of industrial property. It's well situated with 12,000 people who live within one mile. It's likely that the highest and best use is going to be a light industry uh, that brings in jobs and uses that rail yard. Um, it'd be wonderful to be able to clear the site, bring in a, a new industry that builds a, a fresh, new, modern, efficient building and provides, let's say, you know, 100 jobs in the area. That would be a, that would be a home run for the project. So a lot of work still yet to be done. Uh, of course, you can find more at uh, PillsburyProject.org, moving Pillsbury forward. Uh, Chris Richmond with us to uh, kind of lay out how they've uh, come a long way, uh, but also are uh, stumbling upon some uh, pretty fascinating mysteries. Uh, again, just give us that uh, that overview of the Doughboy and uh, what you guys hope to uh, ultimately uh, discover uh, in, in your ongoing investigations. Absolutely. Our investigations with our our early Doughboy. We're trying to tease out whether the Doughboy's origin was actually here in Springfield, which we're hearing uh, from the former Pillsbury employees, or or whether it does in fact follow the the company story from 1965. Uh, we've certainly got a lot of circumstantial evidence. We've got a little bit of physical evidence now with with our newfound Doughboy, and we want to hear from the folks out there in the community. Um, what have you got? You know, are there uh, sketchbook f pictures uh, still in, in scrapbooks and family archives? Uh, we want to know what's out there and what you've got. And if you can reach out to us uh, in one way or another at, at movingpillsburyforward at gmail.com or through our website, uh, pillsburyproject.org, that would be wonderful. Now, uh, Chris, I'm just looking at this again and it's remarkable how well preserved that board is. It is. That that board is actually on the inside of a control panel cabinet. So the the outer door of that cabinet has a, a, a window on it uh, that was covered in dust wow. uh, so that it obscured or you couldn't see the doughboy, and the cabinet was closed. So... Um, you know, it's protected for the weather uh, from all these years inside a building originally. Uh, it's in a partially demolished building right now. Uh, actually, that, that's where we found it. We've, we've since secured it um, in a different location. So, um, you know, it's well preserved. Um, we're just looking for more information. And I'm certain somebody here in our community still has that information that can help us verify. Uh, no, no question. Just about what's it. going on here. So, uh, Chris, you were, uh, you know, a, formerly with the fire department, retired. Uh, now you find yourself as a, a bit of an archaeologist. Uh, <laughs> talk <laughs> about that. Talk about that story arc for a moment. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, the funny thing is, I, my, my early career was at the Illinois State Museum working in archaeology. Uh, this seems uh, like a bit of a carryover. Um, you know, we're we're doing an investigation. We're we're looking at the physical evidence that that we've dug up here out of the plant, and uh, and and now we're doing a survey of local records and history and trying to mesh all that in to an historically accurate story uh, 
for not just for our community, but for you know the the greater community that knows the Pillsbury Doughboy. That's pretty remarkable stuff. And thank you for uh, sharing this with us and coming in and uh, laying this out here. And if you know anything about the origins of this Doughboy cartoon, uh, you can definitely reach out. Chris again, give us that information. Thanks so much. And uh, how can people email you? Email us at movingpillsburyforward at gmail.com. All right. So uh, be sure to share any information you may have about the Doughboy origins uh, and whether or not they came from Springfield and uh, had an ad agency uh, take that and kind of make it their own, which, you know, hey, ad agencies, they they tend to do that from time to time. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Appreciate it, Chris. Thank you so much. We'll talk again soon. All right. Uh, Thanks, Greg. It is Springfield's morning news on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's news and.